like a hell cut. Hello everyone, this is Method Avenger. Welcome to uh, the first Rainbow Six video in a long time. Um, I haven't really had the chance to do anything with Rainbow Six recently because school is just an overwhelming requirement, uh, uh, time requirement uh, on my life. So that's why. But uh, we're here with the uh, Crystal Guard mid-season designer notes. There are some actual reworks coming along with uh, the mid-season, so let's go ahead and hop into it. So of course we have the balancing matrix and we actually see Yana's actually being picked a lot and apparently she's too strong. I'm not really sure how because her gadget doesn't really do much besides give her a, a just a distraction tool, but I guess that's strong. Ace is still up there, Twitch is up there. Ash received a nerf recently which just pulled her back. I think Finker received a, uh, received a nerf recently which pulled her back. Apparently she's winning a lot. Uh, Ash is now losing more than she's winning which is good. Jackal is too. Um, so yeah, I honestly think this is good. I mean, a lot of the characters being pulled more to the center point, which is always a good thing. I'm kind of surprised Yana is a little older in comparison, but she is holding her own. Um, I'm pretty sure this one's Osa. Osa's not being played as much as I would have honestly expected, um, which I guess is good, because uh, keeping good average is always great. Defenders, Jaeger is being overpicked, but he's apparently weak, which is bullshit uh he's not weak he's oppressive he's just losing a lot because people have found a way to get around him i think he's in a good position um people just need to stop picking him uh aruni's doing good uh thunderbird's doing really good which I i'm glad to see uh mozzie and valkyrie are doing really good up here they're apparently too strong but oh well i honestly think a lot of this too strong just because they're winning too much not just because they're too strong because oryx he's not too strong he's actually a relatively weak operator because he requires close quarters to be active um he, he just has high mobility which just isn't a usual thing to deal with it's not that he's too strong people just haven't learned to actually counter the high mobility gameplay they'll find ways maybe uh an offensive motion tracker of some sort or somebody that can well i mean lion can technically do that but what if there was like some sort of operator that had a very short range thing uh as part of a passive or like he could activate it and for an extended period of time any movement within a short radius around him was revealed something like that would be pretty cool or like a a uh, deployed threat detector similar to how halo infinite has a deployed threat detector um, except, of course, it can work a lot more like, have a lot of uses, and be more long-term, unlike Lion, which is uh, three uses in its short-term. I think that'd be interesting, We, but we'll see. Ban rates, Thatcher and Jack are still the most banned attackers, and Mira and Valk are still the most banned defenders. Surprise Clash isn't a little higher, she's really frustrating. Um, I'm actually... It's interesting to see that the no bands is higher than a lot of the operators that usually is. It's interesting. All right, so operator balancing. Castle, um, he's receiving another armor plate that he can place. Uh, now four, it was three, but they also reduce the amount that he uh, amount of hits actually takes to remove it, so it's nine instead of 12. Uh, apparently, it's, uh, target is casual and top ranked, which is a weird spread, but okay. Uh, at the core, Castle's armor panels represent one of the most quintessentially siege operator abilities reinforcement is in siege's dna while they served him well over the years we felt this stock was a little his stock was a little limiting especially with uh such clear counter is sledge and literally the uh soft destruction um sidearm it's kind of kind of oppressive too um starting with each round he'll uh start with an additional armor panel uh this is expected to change how Castle approaches each map and uh, encouraging more creative creativity in their placement. Now he'll be able to employ more complex defensive setups, uh, stand out as much more effective anchor pick while feeling less as a uh, less of a string if there's a sledge uh, on his case, which is good. I'm glad they did this. Um, I don't ever play Castle because he's just not my play style. I play anchor regardless, but he's just not my play style. I prefer to be a roaming anchor. I prefer to. I anchor down above the uh, the bomb site and just stay there, but oh well. <clears throat> Clash is receiving the super shorty. Um, remove the uh, P10C. I don't remember which one the specifically the P10C was. This will be interesting giving her a shotgun. Uh, whew. that is an interesting change now that I think about it. A population again is casual and top rank. Clash 
Say hello to the Super Shorty Shotgun. Uh, with a pick rate of only 3%, the P10C uh, <laughs> hasn't even been seeing much use anyway. Uh, hasn't been seeing much use in classes. Low it out. Given that she already has a machine pistol at her disposal, we wanted to introduce a weapon to her kit that offers a different option from what she already has. Super Shorty will open up more gameplay. I just thought of a interesting thing. So she's hanging out in a corner, but she can't get out of there because the enemy team is running on their side. She pulls out the shotgun, turns around, and soft opens a wall and crawls through. That'd be an interesting way to get out of tough situations. I think that might be one of the gameplay options I just mentioned. I'm gonna have to test it eventually. Okay, to the first actual- Oh my god! Look at this picture! Okay, so the first actual rework is to cap can. The number of entry denial devices per door frame is no longer <laughs> limited to one. Uh, population targeted by this change, casual. If one entry denial device in the door is a fun surprise, what would you call five EADs? Or EDDs. Uh, in an effort to spice up Capcan's gameplay, he can now place a greater number of traps on doors and window frames, both increasing their active coverage and possible damage output. He needs the game more if he can do this. He really needs the game more if he can do this. It'd be amazing. It should be noted that uh, there, while he is no longer limited to the one trap per door window, the deployment space in each will still be, have limited, be limited depending on the size. This means while windows have capability of housing fewer EDDs than doors, they'll still uh, be stacked on either side of the frame, including on the inside and outside maximizing explosive impact. Uh, trigger, trigger traps on a given frame will explode in you. Oh my god! Dealing 60 damage each. For reference, depending on armor, you can expect three or more traps to be lethal. Or just about. That is insane. So, so imagine, like, holding all the EDDs until, like, the last, like, 20 or 30 seconds, and then having, like, one of your team spot for you, and you just place them on the only open door, or the only non-guarded door, and so they'll be forced to come through the door and just did not annihilate themselves immediately. That's gonna be incredible, especially since you don't have to trip all of them. That's incredible. That's actually incredible. I love this change. Um, that's amazing. So Malusi, add a bulletproof cameras, remove nitro cell. Population target is casual and top ranked. Even after the recent reworked Banshee, Malusi continues to be a strong operator. In particular, her win rate continues to trend upward. In order to tone down her failure potential and focus on her intel side, which is what I think she should be anyway, we've replaced nitro cell with bulletproof camera. This combined with, um, the set it and forget it intel capabilities of Banshee will help her uh, better define her in her role, which is good. Um, Oryx, reduce Rima Dash charge uh, refill time, even though he's strong, apparently, from eight uh, to eight seconds, it was 12 seconds. So, I mean, yeah, it's a good change. Well, my increases magnet count to six, it was four. Um, reduced the range. They had five, now it has 3.5. Basically just the same thing with Jaeger, just remove his ability to just be blatantly oppressive. Um, the MX4 Storm has an increased vertical recoil, which is telling right here. Uh, P10 Rooney, uh, reduce the P10 Rooney's magazine uh, to 15 plus one, it was 19 plus one. Uh, total ammo, uh, PVP, I'm confused. So PvP, PvP, it's uh, 181. Hardcore, it's uh, 121, and PVE is 129, <coughs> or one, uh, not 29, 196. I don't know why I said 129. Not sure why they did that. I guess it was just too oppressive, maybe. Uh, they increased the vertical recoil and increased the first kick recoil, so the first shot is going to be aggressive, apparently. Uh, gadget balancing, hard reaching charge. Increase the gadget amount uh, to two was one. So basically every character that has the hard reach charge they can equip uh, is gonna get a second one, which is good. I like that. Uh, not much to go off in that. So there's a bunch of really cool changes. Um, I think this is gonna be really useful since I <clears throat> don't play hard reachers, but I do play a lot of Fuse, a lot of Nook, and a lot of Maru. Um, I think this is gonna be really good. Um, especially since it gives you more, because the whole reason they added the hard breach charge is to open up flexibility and uh, team composition so you wouldn't be necessarily required to run a hard breacher. Just run a bunch of people that had the hard breach charge and have that equipped. I think this is good, especially since they can now make it to where you can also choose less of those hard breach um, uh, side gadget, whatever. Um, the hard breach charge gadget operators, you can choose less 
but still have the same amount of hard breaching charges so more of them can run with like flashes and smokes and stuff like that so this is a good change i actually really like that change i'm not really too adept with these weapon changes mainly because i just don't use half of them i really don't use half of these changes so yeah um well my is gonna be an interesting uh, just kind of trying to pull him back away and i guess more or less make him be more since there is gonna be more make him work as more of a viable alternative to um jaeger without making him be as oppressive as jaeger so the decreased range orcs i like this change because i like running orcs too Malusi, i've always thought she should be more intel based because that's what she is so i like that she can't just kill easily cap uh cap can this is the best change he's ever received um clash i'm okay with i like the cool dynamic gameplay potential that can come out of it in the castle pretty good change um, outside of that, not really much else to talk about. So what do you guys think about these changes? Um, I may or may not test them out on the TS whenever I get a chance. Once again, busy with school, so it might not ever happen. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? Feel free to tell me your opinions in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Matt the Old Avenger. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Peace out.